This program is brought to you in part by the partners and friends of Creflo Dollar Ministries. Coming up next on Changing Your World. The enemy would love to get you to the place where, you know, you start thinking, well, God doesn't, God doesn't really care about my happiness. And then you'll have preachers that'll say, you know, it ain't about your happiness, it's about your holiness. <laughs> well, you know, God wants you to be happy. You don't have to dismiss one for the other. He wants you to be happy. Say it out loud. God wants me happy. <laughs> Change Experience 2023 is coming to your city. Join Creflo Dollar in Miami, May 19th, and in Charlotte, June 9th. Unite with the World Changers Nation and get Psalm 91 equipped live. Experience meaningful worship and the life-changing message of grace. This is a revival like none other. Seating is limited. Register now. Text CHANGE2023 to 51555. Scan the QR code or visit CreflodollarMinistries.org. This is your world, so let's vow to make it a better place. Let every heart that needs to know, your love is here to stay. Ooh, it's time we live a new life. Let us love shine bright in you. We're saved by His grace, so we embrace your love today. We have been uh, talking about what to do when you feel like God doesn't care. And that may have been one of your little secrets or maybe your big secret that as a Christian, you had the thought that maybe God doesn't care about me. And I got news for you, everybody in has probably had that thought. Uh, a feeling that you're abandoned, uh, wondering where is God? If he was good all the time, why did he allow this to happen or why did this situation happen? And I thought rather than ignore those questions after so many years and so many times, and even you asked the question yourself, that we needed to deal with that question. And one of the biggest things that we understood so far is that you know, God never promised some of the things that, 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 that we expected from Him. Uh, many believers have gotten the message that if God cared, life would be easy, and that if God really cared, problems would go away, and they would have whatever they wanted and whatever they needed. If God really cared, that's what the message that believers got. But God never promised that. What God promised was his presence and his peace in the middle of trouble. You see, I, I begin, to, and the, more, the deeper I dive into this, I recognize in my own life, I felt like I, I had been trained to use my faith to either stay out of trouble or get out of trouble. <laughs> and that if I found myself in trouble, then I probably want to keep it to myself because that would indicate that maybe something's wrong with my faith or something's wrong with me or I've done something wrong. It's kind of like John 9 guy, you know, who has sent this guy or his parents that he was born blind like this. And Jesus said, neither. He said, but so the glory can be seen. And we see it over and over again where we'll look at that today where we see situations that come up and, and, and uh, you know, I think it was uh, Lazarus who died. My brother died. Well, why did my brother die? Oh, if you'd have been here, my brother would not have died. He says, no, the issue is that we're going to see the glory of God. And that's the real answer, that a lot of things that we go through sometimes is just a setup so that we can see the glory of God, so you can see the glory of God in your life. Uh, no, God has not promised to take away the trouble. No, God has not promised to take away the, uh, you know, the problem. I mean, certainly he could have taken the children of Israel out of the wilderness but chose to leave them there for 40 years. Boy, that's a long time. <laughs> but I guarantee you they learned some things. 
He could have taken, he could have poured water on the fiery furnace, I guess, but he didn't. Uh, he could have probably, you know, caused the lions to die. He didn't. There's no indication of God showing up saying, I'm just going to, every time you have a challenge, I'm going to remove the challenge. But that's what we think. We think, well, I'm going to use my faith to remove the challenge, or I'm going to remove, use my faith to, to us to, to stay out of the challenge. And, and no, 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 God says, I want you to get to know me, and you're not going to know me until you know that I am with you no matter what you go through. And that really helps you. It helps you when you've been diagnosed with a disease or something, and, 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 and you're like, oh, God, why don't you move the disease? And God says, no, I'm going to be with you every step of the way. You begin to see the Apostle Paul. He says, Lord, I have this thorn in my flesh, a, a messenger for Satan sent to buffet me. Get rid of the thorn. In fact, Paul said, I asked three times, and he never got rid of it. And then Paul got it. He says, wait a minute. My grace is sufficient for you. And so I, I want us to mature to, a, to this next level, this next level that says, no matter what I'm facing, no matter what I'm going through, no matter what trouble shows up, I'm going to use my faith to be grateful that your presence is here, that your peace is here, and you, you're going to lead and guide and protect me and take care of me in the middle of it. And when it goes, it goes. But my focus is not on the trouble leaving. My focus is who is here with me? Because your mama, she might be gone. Your daddy might be dead. You might not have no friends around you at that time. And you need to know that God is with you no matter what you're going through. It gives a whole new insight of Psalms 23, though I walk through the valley of the shadows of death, the Lord's with me. You're with me. Your rod, your staff, it comforts me. You prepare a table before me, not in the presence of your friends, but the table is prepared in the presence of your enemies because God wants your enemies to see the glory of God working through your life in the middle of the wilderness. Glory be to God. And some of you can sense that God is getting ready to show out in your life. You got to know that you have not been going through all the things you've been going through for no reason at all. God's preparing you. His glory is about to be seen. His glory is about to be realized in your life. And I say this morning, hold on, praise God. Everything is going to be all right, praise the Lord. Amen. So, this morning, we want to talk and take this a little further. How much does God really care about me? How much does God really care about me, or does God really care about me? You know, not just to respond to, you know, you know to that question we had before, but does He really care about me? We want to, we want to really give you some ease where that is concerned. First Peter chapter 5 and 6 says, So humble yourselves under the mighty hand, of, under the mighty power of God. And at, the, uh, and at the right time, he'll lift you up in honor. Humble yourself, and at the right time, and at the right time, it's, no, it's not if God's going to do something, but when. Yes. Yes. Some, say this out loud. Say, not if, not if. but when. But when. Yes. And so, we, we, we've got to understand that God knows the perfect time to do it. He knows the perfect time. He says he will lift you up in honor. Somebody says, well, what do I do in between the I believe I receive and there it is? What do I do in between the I believe I received and, and, and he lifts me up? Well, that's where we begin to marvel at how he takes care of us in the middle of those things. And that's something that each of us have got to experience in our own lives, man. And look at verse 7. He says, uh, give all your worries and cares to God. Now, are you doing that? Are you doing that, or have you done that? Are you giving all of your worries and all of your cares to God? I know it's a challenge sometimes. I know you're saying, well, you know, Pastor Doll, I can't help, I just worry. Well, worry is a negative form of meditation. And you don't want to worry because worry can be a power that can cause things to show up in your life. The thing you worry about the most shows up and it appears into your life. He says, I don't want you to do that. I don't want you worrying. Think about that. God loves me so much, he says, give me your worry. Wow. 
That's big. That's a relational God who says, give me your worry. I don't want you worrying. And yet, there are lots of things we worry about. We make room for worry instead of making room for peace. He says, give all your worries and your cares to God. Why? Why do you want me to give my worries and cares to you? He says, because I care about you. That's a God who says, I care about you. Give me your worries. I know what happens when you carry the worry and the stress of it and the pressure of it. I know all, you know, at one point it, it seems like something so intangible, so what's the big deal? But God knows that carrying that intangible worry and care will eventually produce something physical in your body, and all of a sudden your body begins to respond to the worry and the care, and things happen that God doesn't want to happen. That's how much God cares for you. He says, I'm dealing with the root issue. Give me your worry. Give me your care, because I care. Don't ever question uh, a God like where his care is confer it's concerned. And that's what this message is about today. We're going to look at how much God cares for us. Give me your worry. Give me your care because I care for you. I don't even want you going to bed worried. Some people wake up worried. And that's, that's sad. You go to bed worried. You wake up worried. That, that will mess with you. That will mess with you. And God doesn't want that to take place. Why? Because he cares for you. So God absolutely cares about people. God absolutely cares about their feelings and the problems they're facing. So let's resolve some, some questions that we have about God's care. Here's the first question. Does God care about my happiness? Somebody says, what? Yeah, that's a question you've had. You might not have asked it, but does God care about my happiness? Because the enemy would love to get you to the place where you know, you start thinking, well, God doesn't, God doesn't really care about my happiness. And then you'll have preachers that'll say, you know, it ain't about your happiness, it's about your holiness. <laughs> Praise the Lord, that's about the holiness. You need to be more holy, trying to be happy. You need to be holy. Well, you know, God wants you to be happy. You don't have to dismiss one for the other. He wants you to be happy. Say it out loud. God wants me happy. <laughs> and so when you look at this, God created our senses, your, your touch, your, your taste, your, your eyes, your everything. He created our senses as conduits of enjoyment. In other words, he's given you your, your sensory mechanisms mainly so you can have enjoyment. You, you've got eyes so you can look at things and ears so you can hear beautiful things and, and, and taste so you can taste beautiful things and smell so you, all of that are, are, is, it has been given to us by God so we can enter into enjoyment. He gave us eyes to see majestic landscapes and, and, and colorful sunsets. I'll never forget when I was in, 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 in uh, South Africa and I woke up and in the window and there was tabletop mountain and there was a cloud that was laying on that mountain like a tablecloth. And I said, oh, what my eyes behold. And that was an enjoyment, something that I enjoyed. He gave us ears to hear the heart-stirring sound of music, the enjoyment of it. Now, I don't enjoy all music, but, you know, need a bacon to them, and, you know, I enjoy <laughs> giving you the mustang I have. <laughs> you know. You're supposed to listen to sign me up for the Christmas. And I want good music, you know. Praise, praise the Lord. Let's go on. We get to smell the morning dew. We get to smell the sizzling pork, the sizzling pork bacon in the kitchen. <laughs> Not that other bacon, pork bacon. Somebody said that ain't good for you, but it sure smells good. <laughs> my, my youngest daughter heard on the news that they were having a shortage of bacon. She almost started crying. <laughs> the enjoyment, laughter between friends, that, 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 that all comes from God. It's all God's idea. Christian people get together like they're not supposed to laugh. I don't know what, I don't know where that came from, but God wants you to enjoy your fellowship. He don't want everybody getting around, you know, feeling like, do I have my issue covered up good because I don't want them to know what I'm really going through. Listen, the body of Christ has perfected phoniness, and you and I have made our idea, we made our mind up, we're not going to be phony. It's okay for us to be who we are. It's okay for us to be who we are with, all, with, with flaws and all. 
And thank God, because some, sometimes those flaws can be used to help somebody else prevent them from going through something you've already gone through. But how are we ever going to do that if everybody acting phony when we come around one another? That's not what God is. God wants us to look at each other's life, share what we have, the good part, the, the ugly part, the nice part. Now, there might be some private parts you can't tell everybody. But you got to realize that you have holy is a holy relationship. You got the inner court relationship. You, you got to realize where, where those people are in your life. You don't share, you know, people in your holy is a holy are the only ones you share it with. Now, our court people don't need to be hearing what holy is a holy people hearing. Amen. But God doesn't mind you sharing. You know, we, we even demonstrate our phoniness in just simple salutations. How you doing today? Uh, this is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. I, I, I ain't asked you all that. I ain't asked you all that. You're trying to avoid just, just authenticity, just real transparency can become a big ministry tool that can bless people's lives, but church folks don't know how to do it. There are men in who are single, and they look at some single woman, and they want to get with them, but they don't know how. Their religion is keeping them from going up and just simply being a gentleman and say, hello, how you doing? My name is Charles Greer, and I'd like to um, ask you out for some coffee or something, and, and if you don't mind. You don't even know how to do that. You, you go through all of this stuff, you know, oh, Lord, is that the one? It, ain't nobody trying to get married to you right now. It ain't, ain't, ain't all about that. We, 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 we act weird. We just really act weird sometimes, you know? People are weird. They're weirded out. I, I, I weird out over folks when I just say hello, and they just can't simply, you know, reply. They got to go deep with me. Hey, how you doing? We know a guy like that. He, I, we were just speaking to him. Hey, how you doing? Whoa! And after a while, it's like, uh-uh. We've got to understand that God had made us to perfect phoniness, man, that God wants us to be real, and He wants us to laugh. He wants us to enjoy one another. I had a lady write me one time. She said, you know what? I used to enjoy you when you were serious, but now that you do all this laughing and stuff in church, it's, 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 it's hindering the anointing in my life. I said, poor baby. Laughter, the Bible says, works good like medicine. And get with people that you enjoy. Enjoy life. I'm not sitting back. Oh, well, you know, it's so hard <laughs> to get along. It's so, listen to this, hard, hard to get along. Imagine that. It's so hard to get along. <laughs> just can't hardly get along. I can't hardly get along. Just can't hardly get Seriously? I don't see no joy in that at all. Turn to your neighbor and say, enjoy life. <laughs> Look at James chapter 1, 17 in the NLT. James chapter 1, 17 in the NLT. And I know, you look at me, weird people think I'm off just the rockers. I mean, it's guys sitting up here and telling these people they need to enjoy life. And tell them, I'm going to keep doing that because I have a relationship with God, and He assures me that He wants us to enjoy life. He says in verse 17, whatever is good and perfect is a gift coming down to us from God our Father. Whatever is good and perfect, mature, complete, is a gift coming down to us. All good things, any good thing that ever happened to you is from God. And God wants some good things to happen to you. And David said, I had to believe that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. God wants you to see and experience the goodness of the Lord while you are alive right now. Well, I'm just going to wait down and go to heaven. Listen, it's going to be awesome in heaven. It's going to be amazing when we get there, but God wants you to have a little heaven on earth. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, Amen. Yeah. Let me set some of the men free. So if you'll see a lady, make sure you look at her hand now. Make sure she ain't got no ring on it. And I don't want you to get punched out.
they're beautiful single women in this church. They're amazing single men in this church. And y'all act like y'all don't know that. You don't have to go to no club. I'm just trying to set you free. Now, don't get crazy no after church. Hey, mama, what's happening? You're going to get hurt. They don't play that. Their name ain't no mama. You're going to have to come correct or don't come at all. And put a little mint in your mouth before you go up to her. You come up to somebody, would you like to go eat coffee with me? And she smell that breath. She's like, ooh. Uh, not, 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 no. Amen. Let me get going. <laughs> All right, so here's the deal when we talk about this happiness. Our problem is not in our desire for happiness. Our problem is seeking happiness outside of God. The problem is not with our desire to have happiness. The problem is, is we're trying to seek happiness outside of God. And any time you try to seek happiness outside of God, you're going to get involved in something called idolatry. Idolatry is when you place something above God in more value. In other words, God is no longer first place. You have now replaced God with something else. You have now assigned a greater value to something else than you do God. And so what happens, rather than you understanding the enjoyment that God wants you to have in Him, what happens often is that we're not valuing God like we should. And so now we're looking to try to get happiness in the thing that we've placed above God. And so that's what the problem is. And people say, well, you can be happy in God. Well, I, don't, I really don't believe all that. And, and so now that's where the journey goes. You're now taking a journey and you're trying to go down a, a road or a path where you're trying to achieve happiness outside of God. And you bump into hurt, disappointment, expectations are not filled. You operate in a worldly perspective where you feel like I've got to get validation and in order to be happy, I've got to to be accepted in order to be happy, all of these weird things in order to try to achieve happiness outside of God. So the problem has never been God doesn't want you to be happy. The problem is you're trying to achieve it outside of God, and it's going to always be a pseudo-happiness. You're never going to quite be happy, maybe for a moment, maybe for a day, maybe for a week or a year, but it seems to dwindle away because any happiness without God is happiness that has an expiration, and God doesn't want you to have that. But in Him, oh my God, it just gets gooder and gooder and better and better. Amen? Do life's circumstances sometimes cause you to wonder whether God really cares about you? Well, you're not alone. In his three-message series, Does God Really Care About You?, Creflo Dollar delves deep into the impact of God's love and presence in the lives of his children. God loves me so much, he says, give me your worry. So focus more on, I have faith that he's with me. I have faith that he's going to take care of me. Quit putting so much emphasis on the trouble and start putting all of your focus on his presence. And then when you see his presence, you can have his peace. And then people look at you and say, how can you be so peaceful when you're going through this? And you can tell them, because I know I'm not alone. Order this series today for a love gift of 20 U.S. dollars for CDs or 30 U.S. dollars for DVDs. Simply visit CreploDollarMinistries.org and click eStore. Scan the QR code or call the number on your screen. Walk in the peace of God today. Calling all world changers and those who have been changed by the message of grace. It's homecoming time. We've been on the road spreading the gospel and now it's time to bring it home. That's right. Grace Life 2023 Homecoming is upon us and will be an experience like no other. God just showed up one day in His mercy and in His grace because He knew it concerns you. We have a better covenant with better promises. 
We are inviting the entire World Changers Nation home for a three-day weekend, July 13th through the 15th at the World Dome in College Park, Georgia. When we get a revelation of who's with us, we know that we are never alone because you know what? I know that the Lord has my back. Join us for life-changing revelation during this soul-stirring weekend filled with all the excitement of the Lord. This is a conference you don't want to miss. Welcome home, World Changers. No matter where you are on your personal journey, the Word of God can reach you. Tune into World Changers every Sunday at 10 a.m. or restream at 2 p.m., 6 p.m., and 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Have you ever had God save somebody in your family and you they, they were no good for nothing dirty, but He saved them anyway, sanctified them, filled them with the Holy Ghost? Text Watch Now to 51555 or visit worldchangers.org for more information about services and stream times. I open my heart, I open my mind, I open myself up to God possibilities, to God happenings, God encounters, whatever He wants to do, however He wants to do it, but I refuse to live in the past. We're in this together. No matter where we are, we are World Changers. See you online. Creflo and Taffy Dollar love connecting with you. And here at World Changers, we understand the importance of using technology to do just that. We're constantly working to bring the gospel of Christ to thousands of viewers and followers around the world. And we want you to get involved. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. We want to make the word of grace available throughout every voice of social media. Because of you, Creflo Dollar Ministries is providing a new understanding of grace and empowering change in the lives of millions of people every day. Thank you, partners and friends. Your love and financial support makes it possible to bring this message into millions of homes all across the globe. The preceding program was brought to you in part by the partners and friends of Creflo Dollar Ministries. 